Okay, moving on to our sponsor for today, we've got Helen Ainsworth from BASF. Are you there, Helen? Hello! Hello. Well, I'm not in a Hobbit Hall, it's just the sunlight. Good. I will leave you to it. Um, no, we've got everyone back. Hope for the best. Hope for the best. Okay. Okay. Let me just share this screen. Even after all this time of lockdown and uh, digital presenting, we still have um, technical hiccups, don't we, on these things? The delay. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, most of you know me. I'm Helen Hall. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about Solantra. Um, I know most of you will already heard about it, but I'm still banging the drum. Um, but I'm going to make it a little bit interesting this morning. So if you have got a mobile phone that you're not actually watching this presentation on, go to meti.com and enter the code because I'm going to do some uh, questions um, halfway through the presentation. So I've got 30 minutes, and um, I'm hoping that I might uh, do it in time. So go to menti.com, put in the code, or you can just scan the laptop or the screen in front of you, and we'll do some a, li a, li a little bit of fun later on, just to um, give a break in the proceedings. This death by PowerPoint isn't the greatest thing. So, most of you are aware that we won with this beauty last year as best product. Um, I'm hoping lots of you have it. This is a three kilo pack. Yes, we sell it in three kilo as well as an eight. Um, and the comments that we've had when I presented Slantra before is that we've not gone through the product. Um, it's probably a while for some of you that we haven't gone through the product. So I am quickly going to go through the product. I've only got about 20 odd slides on the product. Um, then we'll have a bit of a quiz and I'll tell you all our PR and marketing materials that we're doing um, to support you guys, um, all our literature and stuff. So big thing about Solantra, break cycle of resistance, rodent free in as few as seven days, not persistent in the environment, not bioaccumulant, and it has this amazing stop feed effect. So it's a ready to use formulation. It comes in um, blocks, which are this sort of size, as you can see um, in there. And they're, they're wrapped in um, a perforated film. So if you look at a block, if you've got any in your soil, you might have seen they've got lots of little holes in them. And that's so that the smell come out, can come out. Um, they've got a hole through them, so you can secure them. As Sharon's already shown in her demonstration, you can put them on a wire um, and you can put them on rods and boxes. It's got a human taste deterrent. It's had extensive lab and field trials. Something that um, I have to remind people of is when we produce a, produ um, a product for BSF, um, when they develop that, that product is a global product. So people might think, oh, yeah, we've got Solantra Act, great. But we're actually late in getting it. So the Australians have had Solantra, the Americans have got Solantra, um, the Nordic Baltics have got Solantra, you know, um, South Africa have got Solantra. So this product has been tested massively in field and lab um, because it has to be has to be able to work in all those different environments. So high humidity, cold, um, extreme temperatures. It's also 99% of the food in it is recognised by rodents and it contains vegetable oil. It's got no pork fats in it, um, which some of the other products on the market have. So just bear that in mind. It's obviously been tested and we talk about palatability of rodenticides all the time. Um, and a ratio of one is means that the, the rodent will eat part of the lab diet, 50% lab diet and 50% of, of the bait. Anything above two um, is good. They say a passive palatability is 0.3 for rats and 0.1 in mice. So just bear that in mind. Um, I've got a little video here, hopefully this will run. 
And here you are, you've got uh, a couple of rats. This is in the lab. Um, and um, they're not interested in the other bait on the side there. They're quite happily opening that. And that is how the rats will eat it. So they'll, they'll leave it in the film. And if you've used cilantro, you'll know you'll just get lots of empty packets. Um, and they literally take it out of it. I can watch that all day. It's very therapeutic. So I was talking about um, palatability. So it's part of our palatability development. Um, and Sharon will tell you that it went in and out of the field so many times to get the palatability right. Um, we did it against bromodialone product. These are products that are already in the market. These aren't necessarily UK, European products. They might be American or Australian products because, um, of course, it's a global product. So we did it against a bromodialone product, difenif, uh, difenifilone, and Kumatet trial. And you can see there that cilantro has, has outperformed all of them by the amount that's been eaten. We also compared it against silage and piglet feed. Uh, it's 13.2 times more cilantro was eaten in compared to May silage. Um, 4.3 times more from um, cilantro to pig fleet. So in a, in a rural environment, as Sharon was talking about a rural environment um, pest control earlier, um, we all know that the, the, if you do rural pest control, the odds are against you when there's a, my, uh, a May silage clamp or there's loads of piglet feed. For me, it was always um, calf pellets, sugar beet pellets. Um, so yeah, massively tested against those. We also did the beef burger, um, and this is just uh, the, the, the protein, it's the meat pate, it's not the burger with the special sauces or the tomatoes and the lettuce, it's literally just the pate. And that was done on a side-by-side -side taste test again, and again, cilantro proved to be more palatable than the beef burger. <laughs> moving, moving on, um, we looked in, in, in the field, so we, did, we have to do field trials, we need to know how it works out there. We need to know how it works against competitive products or market standards. Um, and in this situation, this was against um, brown rats, common rats, and rats and richness. Um, and you can see that these are the treatment bays along the bottom and up the side, the amount of bait that was ingested. Sharon was talking earlier about the way in which we present bait. So we do it covered and protected to um, minimize neophobia. And you can see here, on here, you can see you can see the, the, the empty sachets. Where they've taken the cilantro out of the film, and all you'll get left is these sachets on the wire. So how does it work? It's cholecalciferol. It increases calcium in the blood. After 24 hours of eating it, it causes a stop feed effect, and eventually they will um, die from hypercalcemia. So what is cholecalciferol? It naturally occurs in, in tissues um, and blood of all, around, of, all of us. Um, it's under tight metabolic control, and it's a key regulator of calcium levels in our blood. It's synthesized um, in our skin, um, and at high doses, it causes hypercalcemia. And what that basically means is that we have calcium um, stored in our bones, um, and it increases calcium absorption in the small intestine. So what happens then is the amount of calcium that is excreted reduces and we get um, toxic levels of calcium deposited um, in the organs and the tissue. So basically we get stone, they get stones in the stomach, which, stop, which makes them feel full. So they've got these calcium deposits in the stomach, they feel full, they don't go out to feed, which is great. The last thing you want is rats wandering around when we use um, anticoagulants. We tend to see rats moving around for three to five days after uh, after eating and they continue to eat, feed. There isn't that stop feed effect. So what the clinical size is loss of appetite because of this stop feed effect. And they're not hungry because they've got, they've got these deposits. Um, they're lethargic because of slow breathing, and eventually they will die due to heart, kidney, and liver failure. So, as I said before, control within, within as few as seven days, compared to an anticoagulant, which is 21. 
So if we do this, um, if we look at these side by side, so you've got these are um, got anticoagulant susceptibles that have got no known resistance. And you can see here where the bait was offered on day one, the amount that was uh, essentially rats recorded as a dead by day two. So this is them not coming out. Um, that's how that was identified. And day four, no further activity. If you look at the anticoagulant line, it goes up and down. Still activity on day 10. The anticoagulant in this case was STORM, and we all know that STORM is a single feed and we pull state with it. So, how do we use cilantro? So, we speed bait. So, there's this new phrase called speed baiting. And what we mean by speed baiting is it's quite different to how you would use a multi feed um, or a single feed. So you put seven blocks down in a bait station for rats, two if it's mice, you replenish and inspect on day two. And what you'll find on, the, on, on that first evening or on, on that next day, quite a lot of the bait was gone. So you replenish that. You go back on day seven. When you go back on day seven, you might find a lot of the bait that you put down on day two is still there. So how does that look? So we all know about alpha males and alpha females and or dominance. So what happens with cilantro is the, the dominance will come in and they will have first pick. So they will feed on the baiting day. After eating the cilantro, so by day two, they will start having this stop feed effect. So they won't want to go out. They'll feel full. They don't, need, they don't feel the need to go to look for food. The cholecalciferol is all, we're already having an effect. That then allows the subdominance to come out and they feed. So that's why you have to replenish on day two, because the dominance will have been in there and eaten. You have to replenish. That then allows bait for the subdominance again to um, the day 24 hours later, they will stop feeding, and then the non-dominance. And that's how you can get control within seven days. So we have the stop feeding effect, which means you get less bait eaten, you get less damage, you get less contamination. The customer's not seeing them. You know, one, one of the biggest things that nobody wants is rats running around the front of a property outside a posh hotel, supermarket, somewhere like that with the stop feed effect. You've got, um, you've got that no visual. You've got, you're not seeing that. So you're not get, you've not got the risk of headlines in newspapers. You're not getting that contamination. You're not getting that damage. And you're not wasting money on a load of bait that they don't need to eat. We all know that when you when you pulse bait, here we go, when you pulse bait with a single feed, you don't top up the bait, date and bait until day seven because there's no need. The, the, the rodents have already had a lethal amount. So we've got a comparison here of the seven-day baiting schedule. It's got the multi-feed at the top, so that's your bromodialones and your diphenicums, and we've got our single feeds, so that's your flacuma fens and um, your bidifacumes, and then we've got cilantro. And at the very top here, you can see the day. So we've got here day seven, cilantro, it's all done. And each of the waves is marked in a different shade of green. And you can see this gap here on the single feeds. And that's when you would, that was your first pulse, your second pulse, and your third pulse. But look at the amount of visits difference. So multi feeds, seven visits. Single feeds, five visits. Cilantro, four visits. The biggest cost to any pest controller is time. That, well, at the moment, actually, it might actually be diesel because you're having to go out and diesel prices are going up. You don't want to be going back to site doing follow up visits. When I was doing pest control, one of the biggest bones in my life for contracts was follow-up visits. It, it wrecks your diary. You don't want to be doing them. If you can reduce follow-ups, that's great. And cilantro will do that. It breaks the cycle resistance. It's not an anticoagulant. It's got a totally different mode of action. 
which means it will take out those that are resistant. Sharon's already talked about resistance earlier on this morning. She's brought up the RAG map, and I hope you've all used the app. It breaks that cycle. So you're going to get 100% control. The LD50 for a rat is 13.7 grams. It's a lot higher than your Bradyphacums, your Flacumafens, um, even your Brobodialins and Diphenacums, which is why it's really important that you replenish. You have to go back. You have to replenish. You cannot use this like a multi-feed. You cannot just put it down and leave it and go back in 7 or 14 days. You have to go back and replenish it. On secondary poisoning studies that we did, um, dogs were fed um, rats that have been poisoned with um, colecalciferol, 0.08%, uh, um, and there was no clinical signs of toxicosis. Possums, again, uh, were poisoned and fed to dogs at a much higher concentration of coli, no toxicosis on one or two carcasses. Cats, again, possums poisoned and fed to cats, no toxicosis. I think you've got an idea where this, this data has come from as well. There's not, not many places in the world that have possums. Um, and ferrets, ferrets fed um, rats that have been killed with colecalciferol. No clinical signs of toxicosis. So it balances that performance with the environmental impact. It's not bioaccumulative, it's not persistent in the environment. And when um, birds tested were 50 times less sensitive to it, and that was on quail and mallards. So let me just uh, turn this lens off. I'm just get to here. So are we all in the Meti? In the Menti? Are we all in there? Did you all do the QR code? I'm asking you to for, for thumbs up and stuff, but I can't see any of you. So um, so let's begin. So, name the actors found in the rodenticides still on your phones, and our screen come up, and it's a free throw, and you just name the active ingredients that you know, and they'll come through here. Doesn't seem to be working. Oh, oh coming through. Be interesting to see which are the which are the most common ones. How many times things come up? Hey, your spelling was great. Okay, so lots of in there, diphenacum, bromodialone. Oh, morphine's arrived at last. Oh, someone's put coli in as well, and colecalciferol. I think they're all there, aren't they? No. What about alpha chlorolose? None of you use alpha chlorose, I take it. It's not on there. Okay, next slide. Let's see what comes up next. So, do you all know the difference between speed baiting, pulse baiting, and surplus baiting? Yeah, you're quite confident with it. You kind of know the difference and how to do it, or you really haven't got a clue. Pulse baiting used to be a really big thing probably about 10 years ago, and most people don't tend to do much pulse baiting anymore. Hey, this is good. This is showing professionalism. Okay. A few more coming through. Oh, 
Let's switch to the next one. Just bear with me. I don't know what's going on there. Look at your phone, there'll be a question pop up. What's the main mode of action of cilantro? Causes hypothermia, hypothermia, or hypercalcemia? Yay! Great! Yeah, it's always the hypers and the hypos people get confused. If hyper always means um, more of, lots of. Hyperactive, think of that. Next one. What is speed baiting summarised as? Is it summarised as 727, 377 or 369? There you go, you've all been listening. How many blocks would you use when you're baiting for rats? Is it one to three? Three to five or five to seven. Oh, that's great. Brilliant. Which species is cilantro approved for? Ratters, ratters, brown rat and house mice, or all of them? Ooh. Technically, that is right, brown and brown rat and house mice. And how long after eating does a stop feed effect occur? So this is your last question. One day, three days, or seven days? Not bad, not bad. A little confusion over that. But good. Right. Let's go back to here. So I hope that broke it up a bit. Um, just some bits now on what we've been doing. Um, some little bits here, some little um, reminders of what it does. So it's three times faster, no resistance, saves time, saves money. We've also got these nice little QR codes now. Um, this one will take you through, let's my laser. This one here will take you to the Cilantro campaign page, which I'll show you where you can find that. And this one will take you to the online training. So if you've not done the online training, then please go in and have a look. Um, there's a lot of things in there, a lot of little um, quizzes and things, flip um, pictures and marrying up and, and stuff like that. It's an interactive, it's not a lecture, there's lots of videos in it. Um, it I've really enjoyed it. Um, it's good. So. This is um, our new website. So this has been updated recently. So if you've been online in the, in the last week or so, you'll see that we've got this new imagery and there's a new layout. And if you click on um, products here, you can get through to our campaign page. So if you go to products and then you go to campaigns and then there's three there, there's Turf, Storm Ultra. So if you don't know much about Storm Ultra, go there. 
or there is Solantra. If you click through to Solantra on the campaign page and get through to it, you will find all sorts of stuff. Um, there is videos, there is um, case studies where we've been out and we've worked with different people. So there's one there from Amicus that you can see and there's one from Manchester Port Health. And there's lots more on there. The normal website, as I like to call it, at pestcontrol.bsf.co.uk. Um, you can still find all your stuff on there as well, on Solantra. And if you scroll down, there's all the downloads excuse me, all the product downloads are there, all the literature. We still also have the Real Results Farm. Um, and on the Real Results Farm, we've also got the videos, we've got the training portal, we've got safety information sheets, the Solantra FAQ. So when we launched Solantra, we had a lot of questions come in. And over the last year or so, as we've done presentations like this, um, as more questions come through and we answer those questions to people, we put those on there. So if you've got a question about Solantra, um, which countries is it sold in, stuff like that, then you can look at Solantra FAQs. Um, you can connect with us online. There's all shortcuts there. And there's also the rack cost calculator. If you think Solantra is expensive, please go in and have a fill-in on the rack control cost calculator. Everything is adjustable. You can be a farmer or a pest controller, and the, the, the difference will be, um, so here on the farm is when you've got value or built in to food. So that is food that is normally eaten. That's cattle feed or sheep pellets or whatever. You can adjust the number of rats there, and you can adjust the number of bait points. You can also fill in here um, the active ingredient. You can put different products in, and you can do a side-by-side -side comparison against your standard single feed that you're currently using and your standard multi-feed that you're currently using. And it will work out how much it costs you to go and do a treatment with each of those products. The only thing you will need, which a lot of people don't seem to have, is you will need to know how much it costs you to go out your front door. So the true cost of running your business on an hourly rate, whether it's £66, whether it's 72 or 110 you need to know what it costs you to go to work. And that is a fundamental number that you will need anyway as part of business. If you haven't done that, then please sit down and work it out. And that includes overheads, depreciation, van servicing, mobile phone contracts, training courses, um, national insurance contributions, everything else. The online training can be found at training.salantra.com. Newsletters, if you've done the online training or you've given us your business card at an event, you will uh, have the option of signing up for marketing materials. Quite a lot of people have opted out. If you've opted out, you've missed out on winning tubs of cilantro. We have been giving away tubs of cilantro. So if you want to get in touch and you want to receive these marketing emails, there's probably about two a month. We don't, we won't send you loads. There's probably about two a month, not lots of them. But as you can see here, these are three months worth. We have been given away cilantro. So, you know, if you want to try it, you've got to be in it to win it. We're also on Twitter. We're on um, YouTube and we're on Facebook. Um, Facebook is me, Helen Hall. Have a look for me. Send me a friend request. Um, Twitter, we are BSF underscore pest underscore UK. And there's lots of tweets going on there all the time, sharing of information. Follow us. We'll follow you back. Tag us in, hashtag Solantra, hashtag Storm Ultra or Glyph or whatever. You know, if you've got a story to share or a video to share, put it on Twitter. Let us see it or, or send it to me on Facebook. We love seeing what you're up to. And then, of course, we've got YouTube. YouTube, we have got some fantastic videos on there. So during lockdown, we have launched two new products. We launched Storm Ultra at the very end of um, 2019. And the whole campaign was about to be 2020. Then we've launched Solantra. So have a look in there. There's application and videos on Glyph Gel, the Storm Ultra, the Storm Secure. Um, 
and there's a rat bait calculator, lots and lots of videos in there, and that's being added to all the time. And that's my lot. So thank you very much for joining. I hope it wasn't too boring for you if you already know about cilantro. And for those that um, didn't know, I hope you know a lot more. Please go online and do the online training. Get in touch with me. I am helen.hall at basf.com. Excellent. Thank you, Helen. Um, for some reason, I, I can't hear you. You hear me now? No, still can't hear you. Oh. You hear me? Are we there? I can hear you okay, John. Um, if anyone yeah, pop in the comments whether they can hear John. Yeah. Uh, might be your headphones, Helen, I think. Can you hear me? No. Okay. I'm not yeah, Helen, I think it might be an issue on your side. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm in. Okay. okay. Um, uh, questions? I uh, don't know how we're going to do that. Can you hear me, Helen? Are you... Yeah, I can hear you now, Good. sorry. Okay. Yes, okay. <laughs> so, questions. Questions. Uh, Mainly because seven blocks into a burrow is probably not the best course of action. Um, that's seven blocks. It's a lot of blocks to try and get in a rat burrow. Um, we've got storm. Use storm. Um, are you saying neophobia does not exist when using Sontra because your presentation takes break take on day one? No. Um, Neophobia will exist if we're not taking any bait. Cilantro won't necessarily work any any differently to others. We've found situations where they have taken cilantro, where they've not taken other products. So I think that's down to each individual situation. And as Sharon said, covered and protected baits, you're bound to get them on the bait faster. Um, it's also a proof of permanent baiting. So if you're worried about that, how do you clarify the Dora Rats Museum bait on day one of feeding from a bait box? No. So the um, all the data that's here and the trial data is done with covered and protected. So it's done on those wooden trays. Um, how would you adjust this if you're turning up to a new customer and rats are likely to experience neophobia? Use covered and protected bait points. Um, if you are going to use bait boxes, well, eat whatever bait you put in a bait box, if there's neophobia there, Sharon said 15 weeks. I think I've established you know, I was told box. 7 to 14 days when I did my part one many years ago. Currently controlling small outbreaks on infantry building. Shouldn't do, Martin. Shouldn't do at all. Helen, people can't see um, the questions, so we need to read the questions out. Please, oh, Jeff. sorry. Oh. Um, so Martin said, currently controlling a small outbreak of rats on an intense garden bird feeding station. It's very rural environment. Several young rats seen on a survey at 4 p.m. So if the junior juveniles consume cilantro before adults, will this have an effect on the adults not taking cilantro when sensing or smelling dead juveniles? Martin, the juveniles will eat it. They will, they will start having effects of it. They won't, they're not going to die immediately. So they will go back to the nest. The cilantro will have the effect. The stop feed effect will kick in. And then the dominant rats and, and the non-dominants will then go out. So no. Davina, can you clarify how long the active ingredient weighs active in the body or active predated by a domestic dog? I have a customer who's a vet. She doesn't want any risk to her too small. Well, if her dog was to her own, which is just died from it, even if it's high. Can you please? So cilantro is readily metabolized within rats. So you saw there the feeding studies. I don't know the exact time frames of those feeding studies. I'd have to ask Sharon for that data. Um, how soon after the rats died they were fed. So I'll come back to you on that one. Um, no. Um, if you're mixing 
So, uh, sorry, so scrolling, that's scrolling. Can we put mixed baits like Roma Dialo and wheat and cilantro? Why would you need to? You've got two different mode of actions. Roma Dialo and wheat, are you just gonna, you're just going to fill them up if we take the wheat, so they're not going to get a lethal dose of cilantro, so you might get bait shyness. No, just put one bait in the box, that's it. When is a non-toxic monitoring version of cilantro available? Good question. Watch this space, it might come. It's been asked by many, many people. Is there any scope for this being tested on field mice in the future? Um, yes, John. Um, the, the question has been asked. It was asked by our Nordic colleagues because they have a lot of Apodemus species. Um, I don't know where it's at. I don't know if it's been investigated any further or not, um, but it has been asked. So not to be used, no. Don't put it there. That's a lot of blocks to put down a burrow and you'll never get them out because you won't get, if you get them in, you're only going to block the burrow up. A rat will just dig around it. Any other questions? On time? That's it. Yep, on time. Oh, yes. Super job. Thank you very much, Helen. Not a problem. Thank you.